In this demonstration, I'm going to use a phosphorescent material, probably made of zinc sulfide, most common. And that material is going to be able to take some energy, a specific form of energy of light, and make it glow. And I have three light sticks. Okay, and if I'm going to have a red light stick, and I'll just put a red color here, a red light stick. All right. And I'm going to have a green light stick. And I'm going to have a blue light stick. And we're going to see what type of color from these light sticks will energize our phosphorescent or glow in the dark material. Now, a little bit of review. We should know that red light comes from red photons. Okay. And let's go back to the red color. And we should know that red has longer wavelengths. All right. And green has little sh shorter wavelengths. And blue, in comparison, has even shorter wavelengths. Now, for those studying, OK, the energy equations, you should know that energy is associated with the frequency. Now, the frequency is how many of these waves occur per second. All right, now, of course, you times that by something called Planck's constant, all right, and you get the energy of this light. Now, light that we see normally is a mixture of many different types of photons of light that have individual uh, different wavelengths. The longer the wavelength, the what? Well, the lower the energy. Why? Well, because if you've got a longer wavelength, the amount of waves that occur per time period is going to be less, and your frequency is going to be less. This is frequency. Therefore, your energy is lower. However, if your light has more energy or electromagnetic radiation has more energy, it's because the wavelengths are smaller, which means in the same time period, a lot more waves have occurred. And frequency is how many of these wavelengths occur. So shorter the wavelength, OK, the what? The higher the frequency. And in this case, the frequency would go up. All right, so blue light has much higher energy, or blue photons of light, if you're treating light as a particle, has higher energy than the green and the red because of the what? Shorter wavelength. All right. So let's take a piece of phosphorescent material. All right. I'm not sure how the colors are going to show on this. But I'm going to start my phosphorescent material, get rid of this. And my material is probably zinc sulfide, although I'm not sure it's not listed on the material. It's a very classic glow-in-the-dark substance. Okay, so here it is. You really can't see because I'm in the dark here. But what I'm going to try to do is use different light sticks of different colors to see if they're going to excite this glow-in-the-dark material. Not only do we put some light on this material, we say hey, it glows. Okay, so let me take a, um, a red light stick, what I think is red. Okay, and I'm going to put that here. I'm not sure how it's coming up on the video, but here's a red light stick with red photons that we've learned has longer wavelengths, which means very low frequency. And you can see that there's no glow in the dark. There's no, the, the glow in the dark material is not being excited. It's not able to absorb that energy because this red light or the red photons from this light are not energetic enough. Okay, let me continue with another. Now, this is the green. Now, green, whoa, our eyes pick up the green. In fact, that green is really, really bright compared to the red. So you would think, wow, this is really bright. This is giving off a lot more energy. So therefore, this should definitely make the material glow. And it doesn't. And it's not about brightness. And this was what Einstein was getting at. His photo photoelectric effect was if you increase the intensity, make something brighter, even if the, the light was not as high energy, people thought in classical chemistry that that would make the, the what? The material glow, and it doesn't. So turning up the brightness and illuminance of this material, even if the energy is lower, has no effect because each photon is hitting the surface, okay, with not enough energy. 
There's a lot more photons maybe here per second, but each photon doesn't have the energy to excite. So now I have a blue. As we learn, the blue light has much shorter wavelengths or higher frequency. Now I put the blue light on the uh, phosphorescent material, the glow nut material, and we're going to see that the blue light, the, each individual photon has enough energy. The higher energy light has enough to now excite. Yeah, take these away and you can see that the blue light can make this material glow in the dark. It has enough energy. And this speaks to quantum or quantized uh, energies. This material can only accept certain exact frequencies to make it get excited. See, the blue does it, okay? Whereas the other chemicals are not specific for what this chemical needs. So we would say that the structure of the compound here is quantized. It needs an exact amount of energy. And we're showing that only the blue part of the spectrum of the color that we shine on this, okay, is enough to excite it. Not, okay, not the reds or the greens. The reds or the greens do not have enough energy per photon to excite this. So this speaks to that light is actually a particle and it carries a certain specific energy. And it also speaks to the idea that this surface can only, what, accept a certain specific energy. And we're going to learn it's because of the quantized nature of electrons in this substance of all things. So this substance can only accept a certain specific photon of energy that's specific for its electron arrangement to leap to higher energy levels and then once it has that energy is it excited can give off that energy so we're seeing the glow as a result of electrons falling back closer to the nucleus and only for this substance it can only accept certain types of energies. Why? Because every single substance has a unique energetic arrangement of electrons. That unique energetic arrangement is called quantized uh, theory or quantum theory. And that's what Bohr first did. So pretty cool. All right. Phosphorescent material. And a little background about phosphorescent. It's not really made of phosphorus. Phosphorus actually when it reacted with oxygen had a little bit of glow when it reacted and people thought it was glowing. So actually phosphor materials do not do this. So phosphorescent is the idea that you take the energy in as long as it's specific enough and then what? You could use it, it uses it to be released slowly over time. So it's transitions back from the excited state back to a state close to the nucleus takes a little while and we call it phosphorescence.